Welcome back. We continue our bivariate analysis. We continue um, our videos on how to analyze or compare the relationships between two variables when one of them is categorical and the other one is numerical. Uh, in this video, we will be covering the ANOVA test or the analysis of variance test. Now, this is going to be the last video of this series, uh, the series of data exploration and hopefully if time permits then we'll be covering uh, data mining algorithms from the next video on now let's remind ourselves of where we are we're studying we're covering bivariate analysis and we're doing categorical and numerical variables when one is categorical and the other is numerical and we're doing the ANOVA test or the analysis of variance test now the analysis of variance, what it does is it assesses the whether the averages of more than two groups are statistically different from each other. This analysis is appropriate for what? For comparing the averages of a numerical variable for more than two categories of a categorical variable. So remember, we have av we have one numerical variable and the other one is categorical variable what we do is we compare the averages of a numerical variable for more than two categories of a categorical variable so what that means is for the categorical variable we need to have at least th three uh, groups <coughs> or three categories and what we do is we sort of compare the corresponding averages of the numerical variable to those three or more groups of the categorical variable now the way people sometimes do it is by building a table like this and uh, we compute what is known as between groups sum of squares so SSB that's for between groups and then within groups sum of squares SSWW for within groups and then we compute a total sum of square SST and then we have a degree of freedom for between groups DFB we have a within groups degree of freedom DFW and then we compute a mean square for the between groups and within groups or so MSB for between groups MSW for uh, within groups uh, which is the value of the sum of squares over the degree of freedom after that we find this F statistic this is the point we find the F statistic which is the uh, mean square of the between groups divide by the mean square of the within groups after that we look up that if statistic in a table of probabilities and we find what we call the critical value or the probability of F now um, in the website Professor Syed Syed gives us these equations the equations in the equation in the following slide in the coming slide f to compute each of these for the sum of squares for the between groups and the sum of squares of the within groups and the total sum of squares I hope you're familiar with this, with n, for example, uh, sample size, with x, Som we sometimes you can have x bar, which is the uh, mean of, of, um, of the sample, degree of freedom for the within uh, groups, for the between groups, and for the total groups. f has f distribution with degree of freedom, um, <coughs> we have two degree of freedoms here for the between groups and the within groups now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this by giving you an example and do it in a slightly different way although we should end up with the same results let's assume that we have the weather data set the um, weather data set is a famous data set us used usually uh, for uh, you know testing with machine learning experiments and things like that uh, it has five fields or five columns or five attributes outlook temperature humidity uh, windy or and then to play so basically people are trying to play tennis here we play some sports according to the four uh, previous variables outlook temperature humidity whether it's windy or not we decide to play or not and from that data set we take two we'll take two columns or two attributes the outlook and the humidity now the outlook is our categorical variable it can be 
uh, overcast, rainy, or sunny, and the humidity is our numerical variable. Now, what we do is let's assume that we wish to test if there is a significant difference between the averages of the numerical variable, which is the humidity, in the three categories of the categorical variable, which is outlook. So basically, again, we're trying to check whether there is a significant difference between the averages of the numerical variable in the three groups of the categorical variable. Now, what we do is we organize the data as follows, and this is taken from the weather data set. You can Google it, or in fact, if you want to just quickly see what it looks like, this is what it looks like. This is uh, for Weka format. So we have here columns are called attributes. We have outlook, attribute temperature, attribute humidity, windy, and play. And these are the types. So outlook is categorical. It can have one of three categories temperature and numeric, humidity is numeric, windy is binary, either true or false, and then the class is whether to play or not. So we're choosing outlook, which is categorical, and humidity, which is numeric. Humidity is the uh, third value, so it's we're speaking about these values here, 85, 90, 83, 96, and so on and so forth. Now, what we do is we organize the data as follows. We take the three groups of our uh, categorical variable, which is outlook, overcast, rainy, and sunny, and then we get the corresponding values of the numerical value variable of the humidity for each of them. And we build a simple table like this for the for all the groups from the categorical variables, from all the categories from the categorical variable. We build a count for each subset, so N1 is the count for us, for example, for overcast, how many, how many points we have, how many values. N2 is for rainy, N3 is for sunny, then we compute the mean for that subset, so the mean for this, x bar 1 is the mean for this subset for overcast, x2 bar is for rainy, x3 bar is for sunny, and we compute the variance, s1, s2, s3, for each of these categories, for the values of the corresponding values in the numerical uh, variable for each of these categories. So n here is the sample size, x bar is the sample mean, and s is the sample variance. We'd like to have a th uh, another variable called k, which is the number of independent comparison groups. We'll use this to find the degree of freedom. So k is the total number of independent comparison groups. In our case, k is 3. We have 3 groups or 3 uh, uh, categories. Now, given this information, we compute f. So rather than uh, doing it maybe this way, and this way, I am showing you a way of doing it directly here. We compute f according to this equation, the summation of n of j. Now, n of j is the size, sample size for each group, for jth group. x j bar, x bar j rather, is the sample mean for the jth group, and x bar is the overall um, uh, mean. So what we do is from all of these values now we compute an overall mean rather than sample mean we compute overall mean so we sum up all these values and divide by uh, uh, the number of points divide by 4 plus 5 plus 5 by 14 so we have sample size sample mean overall mean and k now is the number of independent groups as we said is 3 divide by, this is the sum of squares as you can see here, so this is the sum of square, this is the between groups, sum of square, over uh, the sum of groups for the bit, for the, for the, for the within group, sorry, sum of squares, so x minus xj bar, so x now each, for this is now the values for each group, we loop through them and we subtract the, uh, we subtract the mean and square and get the sum of that, over n minus k. Now, what we do now after that, after computing f, we look up the critical value or the probability of f. We, l we find it in a table of probability values for the f distribution with degree freedom 1, k minus 1, and degree of freedom 2, capital N minus k. Now, a few things that I'd like you to notice here. n of j is the sample size of the jth group. So we go back here, n here is 4, here is 5, here is 5. Um, <coughs> the sample size. And j here is, if we have three groups, then j can be 1, 2, and 3 for each group. 
x bar j is the sample mean on, in the jth group and x bar is the overall mean as we mentioned here this is x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3 and then we compute a global x bar the overall mean k represents the number of independent groups in this case is 3 because we have overcast rainy sunny 1, 2, 3 and n is the total number of observations in the analysis n is not the population size but rather it's the total sa total sample size in the analysis so the sum of sample sizes yes so n is the sum of sample sizes if we have other points for other uh, uh, um, other values or other categories of outlook we ignore them we only sum up the ones we are interested in the ones that correspond to car overcast rainy and sunny so n is the total number of observations in the analysis it's not the population size but rather it's the sum of the sample sizes in the comparison groups i.e. n1 plus n2 plus n3 here we have n1 plus n2 plus n3 now as we said we compute f according to this equation I hope it makes sense and then we for the value of f we look up the critical value or the probability of f in table of probabilities uh, in a table of probability values for the f distribution now the way Professor Syed does it he fills out the table which is you know quite nice and straightforward as well and then from there he finds the value of f and after that he looks up the value of the he looks up that in the table of probabilities for the f distribution and we end up with a probability of 0.288 so this is the exact same example uh, but doing it by filling out this table rather than computing f directly as I show you here and the results here tell us that there's no significant difference between the averages of humidity in the three categories of outlook because the probability is quite low yes I hope that makes sense it's quite straightforward uh, I've actually given you two ways the way usually people do it or the way Professor Syed here shows us or another way of computing uh, the value of F directly by you know building simple tables like these getting counts means and variances and then applying everything into this equation here that should go gives us give us the same value thank you very much again for watching and again I'm going to stop here uh, next time I'll be recording videos on data mining thanks again and I'll see you in one of my next videos